Hi friends. So let's say we have another short video. It's not exactly one of my mainstream videos, whereas I'm gonna be doing commentary and split screens, all that wonderful stuff. You, you'll see a little something in the background, but it's not gonna be nothing too fancy. So, a few days ago, I saw this meme. And it goes to the effect of, you'll know, see it on the screen, you know, try to shift it around so you can see the whole thing in its entirety. To the effect of, only in America can there be a Black Awareness Month, a Black Holiday, all Black colleges, and Black dating sites and clubs, and we still say everyone else is racist. And obviously, friends, there's a problem with that. So here's, let's break it down, shall we? Because people talk about Black History Month as if that's the only history month we celebrate here. And I remember in high school, there was a Hispanic kid, his name was CJ, and I was wearing an African, you know, uh, sticky on my shirt, whatever, he, he ripped it off, I was like, well, what about, what about Hispanic Heritage Month? He was Hispanic. And it's like, well, clearly people don't do their homework because we do have a, we do have a Hispanic Heritage Month. It's in September and October. And while I was doing my homework on this topic, whatever, I actually looked at my notes to see what other, to see what other heritage months we have. Let's see here. We have Black History Month. We have Arab History Month. We have Italian American History Month. Filipino History Month. Hispanic and Asian History Month. We have Pride Month. We have Women's History Month. We have Confederate History Month in the month of April. We also have International Women's Day. Okay. Now. The reason why we have these things is because we can't have nice things. The reason why we have these things is because when the story of America was being told, there was no story being told from the perspective of blacks, of gays, of women, of Asians, of Hispanics. Because surprisingly enough, shockingly enough, back in the colonial days, around the revolution, there were actually 20,000 Hispanic people in this country. We had, of, we had a lot of Native Americans who we systematically destroyed, but we don't talk about that either, okay? We don't talk about how Baron Frederick von Steuben was actually an openly gay military officer and he helped train soldiers for the revolution. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about how Betsy Ross was a woman who sold them our first flag together. We don't talk about how Christmas Addicts was a man of black and native or and or native ancestry who was one of the first people to die for the cause of the American Revolution. We don't talk about these things. This is why we have black history in place. Okay? Black history was not even a thing until the 20th century. And that was first Negro History Week. So we can actually talk about these things because they were not incorporated into mainstream history classes. And for the most part, it still isn't. Let's be real here. Outside of Martin Luther King, outside of Rosa Parks, and probably Obama now, who do we talk about that's, you know, black history? Do we occasionally get Malcolm X? Do we talk about Benjamin Banneker? Do we talk about Phyllis Wheatley? Do we talk about Asa Philip, Asa Philip Randolph? Do we talk about Medgar Evers? Do we talk about Marcus Garvey? Do we talk about W.B. Dois? Do we talk about any of these people? No. Most people don't even know they exist. And they cannot tell me, I'm sure if I asked them, was what Benjamin Manneker is famous for? I'm sure they couldn't tell me what Phil Sweetley is famous for. That's why we need black history. Because our story still isn't being told. We can sit there and act like because, you know, we had a black president for a coffee break and he's half black as it is, you know, that all of a sudden post-racial issues are gone, but that's not the case. And you can sit and live in that uncomfortable, that stupid word if you want to, because you want to face uncomfortable truths, but the uncomfortable truth is still there. Okay, moving on. So again, we have our black holiday. Let's talk about that black holiday, shall we? And how it was advocated for it from 1968 to 1983 when it was signed into law. Okay, it didn't go into effect until three years later, and it wasn't even celebrated in the United States in its entirety until the year 2000. Okay, meanwhile, this country, you know, this that, that holiday was for somebody who fought for the rights of everyone, and yet we don't, we also don't, you know, talk about the fact that Cesar Chavez has his own holiday too, but you know, but of course, you know, we only talk about the black people because that's like the because we feel like we're the only ones talking in the space, but there's there's, there's there's holidays for everybody you can think of. But still, it's ironic that we, you know, we had an issue with, you know, with Martin King and acting like a big, that's a big deal. Yeah, we celebrate Columbus Day. And this is a tiny little Italian man who sat there and systematically destroyed a huge part of the Caribbean. Never stepped foot in America, yet we, discuss, we, yet we revere him and we hold him up to his exalted standard. Does that make sense to you? Anybody? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hello, somebody. Does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me. 
Like, why are we celebrating somebody who was essentially a racist, genocidal eugenist, where, who, who stripped the land of his resources, sent it back to Spain, where he wasn't even from, and we didn't never, never step foot in America, but yet we're celebrating him. Yep, our banks are closed for him. Our schools are closed because of him. We get taught, oh, Columbus said the ocean blue in 1492. Bull, okay? We celebrate Thanksgiving, even though we know what happened to Native Americans after that Thanksgiving, if it ever, ever took place. They were, they were destroyed. They were relocated. They were killed, okay? Let's not do that. Let's not do that, okay? Now, let's talk about, for a second, let's talk about these white holidays that we celebrate in the South, like Lee Jackson Day. I don't know if you know who Lee J Jackson are, but that's Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson. You know who they're from? The Confederacy. So as traitors to this country, we have a whole holiday week for the weekend for them or a couple days for them, whatever. We have a Confederate Memorial Month. We have, a, I'm sorry, Histo History Month. We have a whole Confederate Memorial Day, okay? We have days, months for people who literally were traitors to this country, who literally fought for the right for people to enslave other people, okay? That's a problem for me, and it should be a problem for you. And if people who write these stupid memes, who people who, say, who, who share this stuff need to educate themselves and know what they're talking about because it's offensive to people who have intellect and who know their history to sit there and see this kind of stuff and be like, yo, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And then that, black, that HBCU comment, oh, well, you know, all black colleges, do you know why we had to have all black colleges? Because between 1865 and the 1950s, black people usually weren't accepted into, into normal colleges. Most colleges had what they call legacy admissions, which is still around to this day. You know what those legacies are? Those legacies are usually full of rich white men. Father, son. Oh, your dad was, you know, Smythe Buford Higgins the third. Oh, well, guess what? Smythe Buford B Biggins the fourth. Come on in. You're a legacy admission. You don't get it on. You don't get it on your own merits. You get it because of what your family looks like or who your family is. Don't do that. And people like to throw the HBCUs, whatever. Yes, historically black colleges, universities. However, what people don't realize are, is that HBCUs are actually twenty four percent non black. So let's think about it here. We are, I think, twelve percent of the population. We have one hundred seven HBCUs, fifty eight are private, and of those HBCUs. Over over a fifth, almost a fourth of the people who go to HBCUs are non-black. Kind of like you did the reverse. The people who usually go to mainstream colleges, twenty-five percent probably are black or Hispanic. Not together, just you know one or the other. This is why we have HBCUs. Okay. So let's not sit there and, and delve into the ignorance and deal in the ignorance because we don't because clearly people don't know what they're talking about. And it's offensive. And they want to go on to talk about black clubs. Okay, I never, ever in my life have been anywhere that says this is a black-only club. We've had hip-hop night, which you can assume is a black-only club or black-only midday, whatever, but that's a night. Just like we have like we have Latin night. Like we have women's night. You know, what ladies get the drinks free, so on and so forth. Does that mean now because women have a night where they get drinks free that all of a sudden that you know this country can't talk about right sexual issues or misogynist issues? Does that mean because we have International Women's Day that all of a sudden that all the women's issues in the world have disappeared because we have a single day for them to talk about you know celebrating their womanhood? Doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. And they, they want to talk about oh we well, yes have black only dating okay. We also have Miss. We also have Miss Black America. Why? Because we do not fit in mainstream spaces. Okay, we do not fit, for the most part, in Miss America Beauty. So we have to come up with something for ourselves. We have dating sites and, and apps and stuff that for ourselves. Okay, but you look at the majority of these, mostly dating sites and these websites, whatever. Who do you see on these commercials? You don't see anything that looks like this, do you? And since when was Black Planet such a bad thing for us to have for ourselves? Get out of here. Like, I don't see, you know, Grindr up to recently being inclusive. I don't see Plenty of Fish up to recently being, say, hey, like, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're down for the Blacks. Like, no, you look at Plenty of Fish, you look at um, eHarmony, you look at, uh, I don't know what you straight people look and go to, Blender, whatever. Most of the people in these adverts are not Black people. They're not brown people. They're white people. So... Let's not go there. 
And I find it interesting that the people who share these things, who, who like these things, have no idea as to what history is. And when they're called out on it, they want to be offended. Well, guess what? I'm offended. And there's to my offense and your offenses. I'm offended because I know the truth. I'm offended because I'm smart. You're offended because you didn't want to do the homework and chose to be lazy and wanted to have some kind of privilege and had some and wanted to be oppressed. And well, guess what? Boo boo kitty. You are not oppressed. And if you find memes like that to be truthful and honest for you, well, guess what? You just might be a racist.